This is Off the Press, the newspaper review program, where we take a look at our national dailies and try to make sense of it. Today, I will be joined virtually by two guests. One is Aisha Yesufu, who is the co-convener of Bring Back Our Girls, already on standby. Good to have you, Aisha. It's always a pleasure to be here, Maka. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much. We will also be joined much later by Demola Akimbola, who is the publisher for Podium News to uh, join us in making sense of the papers. But until he comes, we will start off the program. We have a couple of papers this morning to review, but we will begin with the Punch newspaper as it will be displayed, already displayed. Thank you to our production team there. NAAPE kicks as Bristol sacks 100 pilots and engineers. That's the reason, page 27. Petrol, ex depot price rises by six naira. Consumers to pay more on page 27 as well. Stamp duty, outrage on Twitter as FIRS um, slams Nipost chairman on page 32, I believe. Uh, and then Fasomi buried governors and others beat a Fenifera leader Farewell. May he rest in peace. Also, the story is on page nine. We also have COVID updates. Just a reminder to say that Nigeria stands at 44,433 confirmed cases. Uh, according to data, 31,851 have been discharged. But unfortunately, 910 persons uh, have died from COVID-19 in Nigeria. You have the global figures there, but we'll leave it to find out what the figures are saying on the global scenes. The big story for Punch newspaper, hate speech. MBA and activists, activists lampoon the federal government for raising fine to five million naira. It used to be, it is 500,000, but moved to five million naira. Address senseless killings, economic hardship, senior advocates of Nigerian lawyers body tell the federal government. And we have picture stories there of the unfortunate incidents that happened in Beirut yesterday. 50 killed and 1,000 injured as explosion rocks Lebanon port. That story you can find it inside the Punch newspaper as well. 4,000 ghost voters participated in MBA election. That's according to the lawyers group on page seven. 4,000 of them. Find out how this uh, happened in the newspaper on page seven. Quara traces Lagos con contacts as deputy governor and wife tests positive. Um, that's also on page nine as uh, COVID-19. Lebanon, federal government rescues 30 Nigerians and 150 more victims await evacuation. That's on page six, I believe. And we've submitted the timetable, the YX timetable, to the federal government, and that's why X saying, Ogun engineer allegedly breaks into neighbor's house, and you know that kind of story again, rapes daughter, on pages four and five. I look forward to a time where we would not have to read anything on rape on the National Daily. Lastly, NUC believes universities will reopen soon. Laments ASU strike on page eight as well of the Punch newspaper. Aisha, I'll hand over to you. And when we get Demola, he would also join us in the conversation. Hi. Ah, Amaka, I, 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 I also look forward to when we will not be hearing this uh, news of rape, you know, making the headlines all, all, all the time. When, when we will have rape, uh, at all. It's really becoming uh, something uh, very, very worrisome. The rates at which it's happening, the impunity with which it is happening, it's quite worrisome. And it is time that there, there is a state of emergency, you know, on, on that issue, and we, we do so much about it. Uh, looking at the story here, uh, the uh, what happened in Lebanon yesterday, mm. it's such a terrible, terrible, terrible uh, situation. And may, may the source of the dead rest in peace and may God give them the fortitude uh, to bear the loss over there. And the sick uh, may God kill uh, the, the, the injured. It's, it's, it's terrifying, Justin, yes. and the videos that have, have come, come out of that. Uh, I have, from there, I look at the main, uh, uh, the big headline we have here, uh, MBA activist Lampoon, uh, federal government for raising fine to 5 million naira. And, and it's quite, it's, it's quite pathetic, the fact that we are in a country where 
uh, lives are being lost every day. Attacks are going on every day. There's so much insecurity. No jobs, uh, uh, unemployment is rising. The COVID-19, the effect of the COVID-19, uh, you know, the, the number the, the number of jobs that have been lost, we had a really serious unemployment issue and then further loss of jobs, jobs due to COVID-19. You saw what, we, uh, what is on top there, where uh, 100 pilots are to, to be sacked. And yet our federal government is, is focusing on issue of hate speech, on, on, on issue of raising the fight. When, when we talk about this hate speech bill and, and what it has, many people who are quick to, 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 to note the fact that in other countries they have issue of hate, uh, the hate speech, they also have hate speech bill and all of that. But in the case of other countries, you know, they, this hate speech bill, it's hate speech against individuals, against persons. You know, you can't do that. You can't discriminate persons based on their religion, mm -hmm. based on their sexual orientation, based on their gender, based on their, uh, uh, their tribe and, and all of that, their color and all of that. But in the case of our own, our own is say we can't criticize the government. And that's a major issue. The government is there to be criticized. And it is, it is quite worrisome that the that Nigerian government is focused on issues like this rather than on serious issues that is, that is affecting um, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We also uh, have seen uh, the situation, of, of course, part to feel the where the, uh, the president met with the service chiefs and all of that, you know, he presided over a meeting. It, we are sick and tired of this the president presiding over those meetings and nothing happening other than the death and the kill is worsening and things going on. It is time for the president to lead from the front, the same way he said he was going to lead from the front in Chatham House, uh, February 2015, before he became president when he was uh, seeking to be elected uh, as president of the federal and um, commander in chief of the federal republic of, of nigeria and so all of these you know uh, motions without movement where the president is meeting and then they are sending us pictures they are sending us messages on twitter enough of it because nothing uh, is coming out of this meetings that the president is having with, with the security chief from the commander in chief to the security chief incompetence and cluelessness is what we'll be having and it is time for them to actually begin to give us strategic leadership where we begin to have the upper hand uh, over over these uh, 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 terrorists that, mm. that are really attacking us. Quite a number of headlines here. The next one also that I'm going to look at is the issue of NBA. It's really so not just sad, mm. it's, it's painful, it is pathetic that when you think the, the, the if there's supposed to be an election that, is, that will be most transparent, it should be that done by the, by the lawyers, right? These are people who are supposed to uh, be on the... Uh, sorry about, about that, please. Yeah. And so these are people who, who are supposed to be, you know, lawyers. You know, they call themselves the, the learned colleagues, learned people and all of that. But when it comes to election, over the years... The NBA election has been marred with controversy. And hearing that they're saying that, oh, ghost, uh, ghost uh, uh, electorate has participated, it, 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 it's unbelievable. How, where do we go from here if our lawyers are behaving in, in, in such a way? They need to do something about it. Sometimes I say that, you know, I've, over the years, I've, whenever they have all of this controversy and everything, I wonder what is in that position? What is so... What is there that people are ready to do anything, even things that are unethical, just to get into into position? I I, I think uh, it's really quite shameful, and they really need to get their acts together so that they don't become they don't make us a laughing stock. We we need to get Nigeria moving, and in every position we have, we should we should absolutely get uh, to work to do so. Yeah, we should get Nigeria moving. Is uh, is the right thing indeed to do? All right. Um, in the interest of time, Aisha, I can see that you're still looking at that paper, but I want us to move um, forward okay. to the Nation newspaper. I know you don't mind. So we will now take a look at what is going there, going on there. Government, airing stations to pay $5 million. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Uh, speech fine. It used to be 500000 but, well, you can see the huge increase. NBA and other rights groups also have called for that to be reviewed. Under Deputy Governor Sean's PDP Congress, um, that story is on page six of the Nation newspaper. UBA leads 1.5 billion Naira facility drive for NNPC, uh, Bristol helicopter sacks 100 pilots and engineer. Wow, that's on page 27. And we have uh, the burial of Pafasomi yesterday. 
and there's a picture story to that. Buhari orders security rejig as the Christian Association of Nigeria and Sultan raise the alarm. Um, and then we have petrol price to go up as PP, uh, PPPRA raises ex depot price by six naira. Gunmen, um, gunmen kill journalists in Nasarawa. This is not good at all. And then COVID-19 uh, stories and orders on page four. Um, just beneath that headline of Buhari ordering a security rejig, we have religious leaders call for end to arms rise and governors meet again on security and economy. Aisha, you'd agree with me that the stories again are the same. We have the same matters over and over again. Security is here at the top burner. But I leave you to begin. Well, uh, you, 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 you said it all. It's the same uh, matter all over again. You know, just this headline, Buhari orders for security rejig. I don't know. What, what, what orders who? Oh, he, he's supposed to rejig it. The only rejigging that needs to happen, it's, it's, it's first of all, I, I mean, it's the main rejigging. Honestly, if, if we're really a serious country, uh, Buhari should be impeached. The ordinary, that's what the National Assembly should be should be focused on and working on it. Of course, we are what we are, and, and he's still there. Then the next order that you expect to happen is he to reject the, the service chief and just change them. These are people who have outstayed their, their tenure, yet you're still leaving them there, yet when they're not doing what, what they can. A few days ago, the president was talking about that they have done all they can in for the security. The same man that was talking before election was talking about oh, what he was going to do. If you look at read the Chatham, the speech that the president gave in February 2015 at the Chatham House, just, just let him go and take that speech again and sit down and look at it and ask himself, has he done, has he done the things that he said he was going to do? There were quite a number of things there. We haven't done a, a, those things. And the security situation is worsening in the country. And it, it's just it's just it's just sad that we are still talking about this. And the the the, 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 the uh, the nation doesn't even seem to be concerned about the lives that are, be, that are being killed. I mean, Aisha, let me just uh, ask you a bit before you I'm move on. Um, just before we came on, we had a security expert who was reacting to that statement by Mr. President. And he said, well, it's a motivational mm -hmm. speech. Uh, that's what you expect of the president uh, to say. But is it a question of a lack of willpower? No, no can you go back again? Let me get some a motivational speech where he said that he has done Nigerians will see that he has done all he can. No, no, no. When, when the president said that the service chief, they, they, they are doing their best. You know, he said they are doing their best. Mm -hmm. So is it a question of a lack of, you know, I'm trying to respond to what you're saying and asking. Is it a question of a lack of willpower? Because if you're saying the president shouldn't just say he should act, we should see the action. What is stopping, you know, the action will still be the question that we've never gotten an answer to in this nation. Well, for me, you know, that statement where you, where you say it's a motivational, uh, I, I, I don't get it, honestly. I, I, I'm quite perplexed by, by it. We are talking about the fact that over the years, the security situation in Nigeria has worsened. Mm. People are being killed. You know, when we hear these numbers, we, we, we do this newspaper review, we see the number of people being killed. Just this one now at the bottom, we see government killed journalists in the Sarawak. To us, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a journalist, right? To the family, that's, that's, that's a loved one that, that has been lost forever. And we have these killings. Kaduna, Southern Kaduna, the other day, women had to protest. They had to go naked just to say, look, we are tired of being killed. We just think these things are numbers because we are alive. I always like to remind us or to remember that yesterday's victims were one survivors. Today's victims were yesterday's survivors, and tomorrow's victims would be today's survivors. Who is next? Those that have been killed before will not be killed again. The next, the next ones to be killed are those of us that are alive. We shouldn't look at these things as just numbers. We should look at them as human beings, just as we are. So how is, how is the president motivating anybody by telling us the same people who have watched us being killed and the killings increasing over the years, the security situation was need, and they're just there that is uh, that they're doing in enough that that is motivating. It is not motivating, mm -hmm. and we should call it what it is. The president and commander in chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has filled Nigeria woefully, and we need to do something about it. We shouldn't just wait until all of us are killed before we actually uh, begin to do uh, something about it. 
We should look at the yeah. father. If we could be the ones lying down dead, and nothing will still be done. Mm. So what, what do we want to if we're the one dead? We should ask for it to be done now before we actually become uh, victims. Right. Uh, on, on the, this thing, I'll, I'll move to this or that. Just a quick note on the issue of the 500,000 to 5 million. It was yeah. 500,000 Nera fine. It says as if the federal government and the kidnappers are, you know, in Nigeria are, are, are competing. Now, who is going to charge the, the citizens more? Who is going to take as much away from, from the people? And you're just wondering whether the government is in tune with what is happening. Businesses are collapsing in Nigeria. It is, things are going bad. And then all we keep hearing all over the months, what we've heard is increase, 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 increase in the in the way the government is, is fining the people in the way taxes and a whole lot, a lot of things. I think hmm. our our government needs to get a bit of empathy. Without empathy, honestly, it, it's it's really sad. Hmm. Uh, we can't have a good governance as as we should have. Hmm. Then, of course, the issue of the deputy governor of Fondo State. I mean. Our politicians are just, uh, they're just, I, I just don't even know the word to describe them with, mm -hmm. honestly. It's all about power to them. If they don't get power, they, that's why they move from one place to the other. So because he didn't get the the uh, gubernatorial ticket, and then he shuns the, the party and the Congress and, and all of that, they should think more in terms of development, or more in terms of, uh, uh, yeah, let me leave it at that development, rather than just what power they can grab. We mm -hmm. need to go. Uh, uh, beyond uh, uh, all of that. All right, then, let's uh, take the garden. Let me go. Sorry, let me do, this is quite, this PP. Uh, right, very PPP, quickly, go uh, ahead. Uh, go ahead, Aisha. Yeah. Yes. And uh, for me, it's, it's unbelievable that we have a whole, uh, a whole uh, what organization, it's an organization institution that it's, its job is just to control pricing. How do we, how are we going to do that? Yet we say that they, they, they remove, uh, subsidy has been removed. How do you remove subsidy? You're still the one determining how price we go. You can't tell, uh, I'm a businesswoman, you can't tell me how to sell the thing, price at which to sell, and say that you will not, you will not subsidize it. We just need to get serious in this country. Hmm. Okay, in the interest of time, Aisha, let's go to the Guardian newspaper. Um, time is far, fast, far spent, really. Nigerians pay two trillion naira for calls and data in six months. COVID-19 pushes up expenditure and poor services. Each subscriber spends um, 1,725 naira monthly. Really? GSM operators see more growth. MTN claims pandemic spike data usage. Uh, that's a bit of a graphic representation of all of that. Um, information on the front page and if you scroll a bit down because all of that is about uh, trying to make sense of that uh, more voices against kaduna killings diaspora nigerians beckon on the united nations sultan and others urge caution on north northern wide crime and again, we have the breakdown of the figures on COVID-19. Aisha, let's talk a bit about uh, the Kaduna uh, killings. I think that's the major story uh, here before you share your other thoughts. Yeah? Yeah, the, the, the Kaduna killing, no, we just thought, we just, I just touched on that earlier on. The Kaduna killing, it, 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 it has become something else. Kaduna is now a killing field. And you're wondering, what is Governor Nasser Erufai doing there? And this is somebody who was so vocal before he became governor. Who I remember there was an interview that he did where he talked about the fact that, you know, there's always a government know what is happening. They get security reports and everything. Even as a former minister, as a minister, he knew he, he used to get security reports. And, and now he's governor. He just keeps quiet. He's just mom why his people are being killed, why people are being kidnapped uh, uh, anyhow in, in, in Kaduna State. And you're thinking, even, even as the chief security officer of Kaduna State, with the way our security uh, 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 apparatus is in our nation, yes, the, the main power is with the commander in chief. Why is he not speaking out for his people? Why is he not meeting the president to say, what is the president doing about the, the situation in, in, in his state? Why is he not there for, for the Kaduna people? Why is Governor Nasser everybody silent and watching his people being killed uh, anyhow and people being taken away and, and he not doing anything about it? And that brings me to 
the issue of that yata uh, that was taken away over over a year ago, and yet the, 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 the governor hasn't done anything. This was the same person who in 2014 was calling, making demands for people who had been abducted in 2014. Today, as a governor, under his watch, a citizen was taken away, that yata was taken away in Kaduna, and he, he's not doing anything, anything about it. It's really quite... Uh, pathetic. Uh, the killings mm. are happening in, in, in Kaduna, where people are, are not sleeping in their houses, where people are just being killed. They just walk in there and they kill. And what is more annoying is the fact that even with the federal government, the way they, they are trying to explain the killings away, they are trying to justify the risk killings and everything. Killings happen in, in other places, you know, it is condemned. But when it happens in, in, in Kaduna, it is explained. I think it was, I thought it was. Uh, uh, Former uh, Senate, uh, Senator Shea Wissani that said something like that, which was quite apt. And we need to stop that. Mm -hmm. And there's a need for, not for Nasser Erufai to, to realize that he's the chief security officer of the dynasty and begin to protect the lives and properties of, of, his, of his citizens. The primary responsibility of government is the protection of lives and properties. And any government that cannot protect lives and properties of its citizens is not fit to be called a government. Right. All right, Aisha, I'm afraid uh, that's all that we can take. As always, time is never enough. The nation's uh, too many uh, problems uh, are, are there for us to face on a daily, and um, we can't take all of them in just 30 minutes. I want to say thank you so very much, Aisha, uh, for coming. Unfortunately, yes. we're not able to connect with uh, Demola Akimbala. I believe that we'll get him some other day. Do keep safe out there, Ai. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. All right. And that's how we wrap it on Off the Press this morning. Remember, the time is 8.30 from Monday to Friday here on Plus TV Africa, where we try to take a look at the things happening in our nations and have a conversation, hoping that we get answers to the many troubles of our country. My name is Amaka Okwe, and I'm reminding you to keep staying safe out there.